Hello everyone, I'm Landon Schlongen. Today we are going to review DOM manipulation by building a rock, paper, scissors game. There's only six challenges, so it shouldn't take too long. Uh, let's see what they have in store for us. Here's a preview of what we're going to build. Looks like we can check the rules of the game and choose an option. Let's say rock. I won because I guess the computer picked uh, scissors. If I pick paper, computer wins paper. Um, or the computer picked scissors. So, all right. Uh, simple, simple. Let's see what we can do here. Um, the first challenge is um, generate a random choice for the computer. Okay. So we can do, use math.random, math.floor to help us get a, a random option. So I'm guessing they want us to just return rock, paper, or scissors. Is that what they want is to complete this function so it returns a random option okay so pretty simple um here so there's three we can do const random indexed or random index equals options dot length times math dot random so that would be what three times like 0.5 or something or whatever math.random gives, it gives a number between zero and one. And then we can do math.floor around all of this to give us that random index. Um, and then we can just return options, index of random index. And that should give us um, a random result. So here we get rock. If I make a change and it reruns, I get rock again, get rock again. There, I finally got paper. Okay, I was getting worried there. I'm like, did I do something wrong? Okay, we got paper. Um, that's good to go. And we can go on to the next challenge. All right, step number two. There's going to be multiple rounds. The first to reach three points wins the game. Okay, so we need to complete the has player won the round function. It has two parameters, player and computer. The function should return true if the player has won the round, and false if the player has lost or tied the round. Oh, false if the player lost. Oh, well, okay. I suppose it's if they won. Um, Here we go. So if the player chooses rock, okay, so we just have to do a bunch of if statements, I'm guessing. Um, Yeah, and we just return true or false, so... If, yeah, we can just do ifs, why not? If player equals rock, I'm guessing player is going to be rock and also computer is going to be rock or paper or scissors. And, okay, if the player chooses rock and the computer chooses scissors, so computer equals scissors then that would be a return true because the player would win the round then. And then we have more if statements. I can just like copy this down a couple times. Scissors and paper. And then all others would be false. So we don't have to do like all possible choices. So here we go, rock. This one is paper and rock. And then otherwise just return false. And we can do it like this because it will uh, exit out of the function after it returns. So we don't have to do any else statements. This should work. Let's try it out. Yes, it does. If we check the console, rock scissors returns true, scissors rock returns false. Okay. Let's move on. Step number three. Now it's time to get the results of the round. Complete the get round results function. If the player wins the round, update the player score by one. And return the message player wins. Okay. We have to do like a, a string template for that. If the computer and player choose the same option, return the message is a tie. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so get round results. Let's see here. Computer choice should be replaced with computer result. Okay. I think, okay, I gotta 
know exactly what we have to return here. I think we return a string and we update the player score by one. Okay, so where's the player score? Player score is a variable. Okay, so get random computer results. If the computer wins, we also have to use our our has player won the round function, I'm guessing. Oh, they actually changed my, my code. It is shorter, true. Let's see here. Const has player one equals get wait no has player on the round. Has player one the round and then we pass in our user option whoops user option that would be our player and then our computer results i think it's computer result for whatever they chose let's see here or get random computer result. yeah 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 get random computer result it returns rock paper scissors yeah okay so then we check if the player is one if the player has one, so if player one, then we can return like player has one and we update the player score by one. So we have to go player score plus plus and we return a string, which I'm going to use back ticks so that I can like insert this stuff. Player wins. Let's paste that in. Player, player wins, player's choice. Okay, and then we have to put in our user option here. Dollar sign, user option. And for the computer choice, we put in the computer results. I could do like computer choice change it but whatever i'll just keep it how it is computer results so that should be the first thing that we had to do the second thing is if the player computer and player choose the same option okay so if they choose the same option how do we check that we can do if the computer result is equal to the user option then we return at template. So let's check, what is it? Okay, to tie both players choose this. Copy it down here. Um, player's choice, so, I mean, it can be either one, but we'll do player's choice or you, um, yeah. player user option. That's what we called it. And then the last one is if the computer wins, um, we uh, update the computer score by one. Okay. So we say if not player wins, there we go. If not player one, then we return this string. and we update the computer score. Computer score is this variable. So we can just do computer score plus plus. Computer choice. I can actually just like copy this. And put it here. It beats the player's choice, which would be the user option. And I think that's all they want for this one. Player wins, rock beats, scissors, player score one, computer score zero. That's with the uh, console logs. Let's check, it does work. All right, there's our function, beautiful thing. But now what do we have to do? Complete the show results function. The player score span element and computer score span element should be updated to show the updated scores of the player and computer. The Round result message should also be updated with the result of the round. Okay, 
here we have show results. So we have to grab, okay, so they already grabbed the span elements. We just have to like do player score span element dot inner text or inner HTML and have it equal to the player score. Okay, so player score span element dot inner. I can do inner HTML or inner text. I think in this case they want inner text. And we just have to put it equal to the player score. And we can do the same thing for computer score. Computer. And then for the result message, that would be, yeah, use inner text, it says. OK. Get round results to get the result of the round. OK, so same thing here, except instead of computer score, yeah. Uh, yeah, and also instead of this <laughs> round, we can use the round results message and computer score would actually be the get round results as a function. And make sure to call it, and there we go, rock beats undefined. Okay, that is a bug. Maybe we're gonna fix it in the next lesson, I'm not sure. Um, it doesn't work, should update the round result message with the result of the round. Um, do we have to like put in, oh, it takes in user option, that's why. Yeah, okay. Both choose rock, okay. Yeah, just gotta remember that get round results takes in the user option as a parameter. Um, okay, maybe not. Um, your show results function should update the player's score span element. To show the updated score. Okay, I think these have to go underneath because we have to get the round results which update our computer score and our player score, and then it will update our score. Looks like it did. There we go, now it works. Step number five. If you try to play the game, you'll see that you can play for an infinite amount of rounds, but the rules state that the first one to three points wins. Okay, so now we have to put a limit on the amount of rounds there are. Inside your show results function, we need to check if the player or computer has reached three points. If the player has won the game, then the winner message element should be this. Okay. Okay, so we can do if computer score equals three. Or I can do greater than or equal to three, or the player score is greater than or equal to three, then we have to do something. Um, actually, I should do them separate, I think. Yeah, let's actually do two if statements. Let's do if computer score is greater than or equal to three, or the uh, player score and then we can return out or not return out because we actually have to change the winner message element okay winner message element dot inner text would equal the string players won the game actually in that case it would be the uh, the computer Let's actually bring this down, Alt Shift down to copy it down, and then I can paste in the string for the computer. It'd be this one. And then we have to figure out how to reset. Okay. If there is a winner, you will want to show the reset game button and hide the options container. Okay, so our reset game button is this one. And we need to hide this one. Reset game button. Reset game button dot. How do we do this? Dot style dot display. Dot style dot display equals. Uh, we need to show this one, so we have to change it to block, I think. And then for the options container, we have to hide it. Options, container, 
We have to hide. Or actually it would be none, won't it? None for uh, the display. Because in CSS display equals none, it won't show up. And we have to do this for both cases. So I think here it's okay to duplicate our code a little bit. Um, let's see if this works. It doesn't. We need to update the winner message element if there is a winner. Um, is it greater than or equal to two? Is that it? Because I'm pretty sure I am um, updating it. Let's see here, two, two, check, no, console, reset game button is not defined, no, I have to copy this, I spelt that wrong, now let's try it, okay that does work but I'm pretty sure this should be three. Let's see if they change it in the next challenge. Do they change it? Where is their code? Yeah, they changed it to three. And they did uh did this in one line. So they didn't have to you know repeat the code. Because we want our code to be dry. Don't repeat yourself. Step six. If the player or computer has won the game, there should be an option to reset the game and play again. Complete the reset game function. Okay. Resets the player and computer scores to zero. Player score equals zero. Computer score equals zero. We need to update the player score span element and the computer score span element. Mm -hmm. Dot inner text equals player score. Same thing for computer, control D, computer, and then we have our reset game button that we need to hide. Let me just copy that so I don't make the same mistake. Dot style dot display equals none. Then we have our options container. That needs to show up again, so that I have to change to block. Dot style dot display equals block. And then we have our clearing the content of winner message element and round results message. Okay. Paste that in. Dot inner text equals an empty string. And then same thing for the round results message. I think that should be good. Let's try it. And we get confetti, which means this is the last thing that we had to do. Um, yeah, pretty simple challenges. I hope you learned something today. We reviewed DOM manipulation by building a rock, paper, scissors game. And for our next challenge, we have to learn basic string and array methods by building a music player, which has 99 problems which is quite a bit. It will probably take more than an hour, and I'll see you in that video. All right, peace out. Bye.